Hey everybody, it's Monday, January 30th, and we're reading for the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 5. <sighs> Jesus and the disciples came to the other side of the sea, the territory of Jer Gerasenes. So he got out of the boat, a man at once, a man from the tombs, who had an unclean spirit, met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching a sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He'd been saying to him, unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, what is your name? He replied, legion is my name, and there are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large crowd of herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd about two thousand rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident to the town and throughout the countryside. The people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. They were seized with fear, and those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him, beg him to leave their district. Well, wow. interesting narrative here. You can almost say that people during Jesus' time, I don't know the word superstitious, but it's almost like how we are when we were young, perhaps, afraid of the dark, hmm? afraid of ghosts, evil spirits. For they believed back then that these devil, the evil spirits, they dwelt in woods and gardens and vineyards, and especially in dirty places in lonely and deathless spots among the tombs. This is where they dwelt. And it was at night time and before the cock crow that the demons were especially active. To sleep alone in an empty house at night was dangerous. Imagine. Do you hear that? To greet any person in the dark was also dangerous because you're not sure that person could be actually a demon. To go out at night without a lantern or a torch was asking for trouble. It was a perilous place at a perilous hour, and the man, this man, was a dangerous man. So you understand how people lived, how they thought. Hmm? It's almost like when I was afraid of dark. You, you want to go out at night. Nowadays, you have reason not to go out at night by yourself when the thing's happening, but this is the, the fear of that, fear of the, of the devil. Hmm? Now, he said his name is Legion. What does that mean? Legion was a Roman regiment about, of 6,000 troops. So very likely, the man had seen one of these Roman regiments clanking along the road, and he felt that there was a whole battalion of demons inside of him. Right, so this man felt that, geez, not just one inside of me, but there's a whole legion, so many. So he saw them, made that comparison. Mm-hmm. Now, it's funny, when Jesus made the attempt to heal him, he began using the usual method, Jesus, giving a command, authoritative command of that, to the demon to come out. But this occasion, Jesus was not successful. Oh. Next, he demanded the deme demon's name. Now, it was always supposed, again, this is something typical back during the time of Jesus. It was supposed in those days that if, if a demon's name could be discovered, it gave a certain power over it. An ancient magical form that said, I adjure thee, every demonic spirit, say whatsoever thou art. And the belief was that the name was known, the demon's power was broken. So once you knew the name, hmm, the demon's power was broken. But in this case, even that did not prove enough. And suddenly he yells out in a high pitched shrieking voice with its great intensity, and then we see the whole herd fly, plunge down into the steep s s slope in the sea. Even as a youngster hearing this reading, and I'm sure you hear the same thing. Well, wait a minute. 
What if that's my sheep? That's 2,000. I don't actually appreciate Jesus. You're going to heal me. Is, is, is there another way to do that? There's my livelihood. Hmm. But this was done for the man, the possessed man, as a proof that he needed. This was almost the only thing on earth that could have convinced him that he was cured. Because once he saw those sheep go off the edge of the hill, he understood that now that's, they left him. And so Jesus, who understood this kindly and sympathetically, the psychology of the mind, of the, of the diseased mind, and he hoped to use this to bring the man to sanity, to bring peace to that disordered mind. It's powerful. Now, how we apply that in my life, I believe there are people who have been opened up to evil spirits and demons. But we are not to worry personally for ourselves. We have faith in Jesus. No one's going to take possession of us. Only the power of Jesus heals. So we, we don't live in fear. We trust in the Lord and in the cross. God bless you.